Hello, everybody, and welcome to Hold That Thought. Today, we're going to be discussing a dirty, dirty word. Exposure gig. Let's rephrase that. Playing for free. The majority of musicians I've interacted with cringe when they hear the word exposure gig. I myself have strayed far, far away from prospecting clients when they say, Oh, all of our entertainment here is donated for free. This is the common reaction I get from a musician when I reach out to him. You mean, I'm not going to get paid and I'm going to have to drag all my gear out for free? Yeah, man, no way in hell am I going to leave the house for free. Those days are over. This is not my first gig. Do only rookie musicians play for free? What about big name bands? Mumford and Sons, Arcade Fire, Dave Matthews Band. Would they head out to a charity event and play for free? If so, how do they approach the gig? Do they have some type of business strategy set up or a game plan? We are going to get into that and discuss that in this episode about Exposure Gig. The world is full of charity events, the majority of which pay zilch to performers. So why do bands keep playing them? It's all about the exposure. It's all about meeting new people, selling your merchandise, getting your music out there. As an agent who submits to countless events each week, I completely understand where you're coming from. Because if you're not getting paid nothing, that means I'm also not getting paid nothing. With that being said, I do, however, think you should utilize exposure gigs when you need to do it. I recently took on a musician based out of Orlando. I've been, well, not recently, I've been working with this guy for a couple of years. Mostly cover music. I would say over the last eight months, we have switched gears completely and we have gone to promoting his original music. He's leaving the cover scene. He will only be doing cover shows for weddings, special events, festivals, corporate events. And his new focus is going to be on his singer songwriter career, house parties. Major events, music festivals, songwriter showcases, you name it. Many, many more crazy ideas that we have in the in the boiler room working right now. But that's where we're heading. So we had to discuss playing an exposure gig. And we recently just booked an exposure gig that went really well. It was a listening room. Everyone was very attentive. They bought some merch. And they tipped him. He got paid zero at the end of the night. I also made zero. But we knew going into this game that we had to have a game plan. Because it was an exposure gig. And we had to figure out a way to monetize it ourselves. That's the key. You can come across all types of exposure gigs you want. It doesn't mean you can't get paid. Don't let that resonate inside your head. Make your own headway. Find a way to monetize. Find a way to sell merch. So that's what we're going to discuss. And what I came up with is more geared towards special events, outdoor events, festivals, charity events. And the three things that I came up with are marketing, advertising, photo, and video work. So let's start off with marketing. Whether the festival or event is three years old or 22 years old. Let's realize that one realize one thing right off the bat. They're going to do social media marketing. If they have no funds for traditional marketing or traditional advertising, we know right off the bat they are going to do social media marketing on Facebook, 
Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, whatever their favorite format is, and hopefully on their website. So, they have no money to pay you. They have a ginormous crowd. They get 2,200 people out on Saturday afternoon to attend this crawfish festival. You want to play it. You want to meet some new fans. You want to sell some merch. Let's do a trade-off. They can't pay you. Let's negotiate. Sit down with the festival committee, the event coordinator, the booking agent, and let's talk to them. We understand you can't pay us. We really want to be a part of your crawfish festival. We love the charities that you support and the money that you raise for this event. We want to be a part of it. But we need to be compensated somehow. We understand you don't have any money money allocated for the uh, entertainment. But we know you're going to do social media marketing. And we have a new album that we're promoting. It's on Spotify. It's on YouTube. I would like for you to add our link to Spotify every time you make a social media post and promote your festival. That way, it will help us get our music out there. So that's one thing. You can talk to them and do a trade-off for marketing. There, you, and if you don't have a new, if you're behind the, if you're behind the game and you don't have a new album or an old album or any music that you're promoting you haven't created yet, ask them to add the band photo in there. Ask them to add your latest YouTube video. Those are things you can add in the links. You know they're going to do social media marketing. The next thing is for a little bit more established events and festivals, and that's advertising. Most of these events who are established, been around longer than three years, are going to do some type of print. They'll take an ad out in the Sunday paper. They will post in the Creative Loafing, Weekly Planet, TBT. They'll put an ad in there as well. They may do some mailers. They may do spend money on online marketing or online advertising, they may promote over the radio. They may promote even over a podcast. It's actually hot now to have an advertisement on a podcast. Those are things we can think about. We understand you don't have any money, but we'd like to be added and included in your advertising. So when you go to add in the Sunday paper, we'd like the band's logo in there. We'd like the band's promo picture in there. How can they say no to you? when they're not paying you. And if they're not willing to work with you, then you know it's not a right fit. It's not a relationship that is going to prosper over the years. So that's the second thing. The third thing I want to talk to you is about photos and videos. Almost all events, all festivals are going to hire a photographer or videographer to capture the moment. They almost need to do this if they want to stay in business. Because if they want to have marketing and content and material for the following year's event, they need to capture the moment. So if they can't afford to pay you, do a trade-off. Everyone, I don't care if you just published, uh, hired a photographer two months ago and captured pictures of the van, or you released a video two months ago, you can never have enough content. Get the videographer to record one of your songs and to give you that file. Um, Get the photographer to capture pictures of you and the band at the merch uh, table, selling merch, talking to people on stage, jamming away. That's another trade-off you can do. And like I said before, if they tell you no and they're not willing to do a trade-off, it's not a solid relationship. So let's move away from the event and festivals and talk about something else we can target, another way of monetizing and making money at these exposure gigs when you're not going to get paid nothing. If you're an established band, whether cover or an original, and you play venues around town, go to each venue and talk to the manager and talk to the owner. Let them know three months from now you're doing the second annual Crawfish Festival. And ask them, I'd like to be your brand ambassador. For a very cheap amount of money, we'd be willing to hand out flyers. We'd be, we'll put these flyers on the merchants, 
merch merchandise table. We'll let everyone know that you're our main sponsor while we're on stage, and we'll pass these out. Don't be afraid to get involved. Uh, don't. Who knows what they'll say? If they say no, no big deal. You move on. You're not getting paid anyway, so. That could be a great way to supplement income. If you don't want to go in bars bars and venues, find a guitar shop or a gear shop that you, you're in love with. Someone that you want to sponsor. Find people that you want to be part of. You never know unless you ask. So that's another way to supplement some income. It may not be much, but it will be something. At least you could throw it in the band, the band fund. For new gear, van, promo pictures, whatever you need, it's money that is in the band fund. So our next thing is merchandise. I love merchandise. And the reason being is because if I go see a live performance and I fall in love with a band, I don't care what that band is selling. I am going to purchase something. And the reason why I do this and I purchase something from the band is because I want to show them, hey guys, you sounded kick ass tonight. I appreciate you. I want to remember this show. I want your music. I want a t-shirt. So fine tune the band. Rehearse and rehearse and rehearse and fine tune it. Tune it. So I don't care if there's 10 people at the festival or there's 2,000 people at the festival. You need to put on the best performance you can. And by doing that, it's going to get motivate one person to get up, move to the merchandise table, and buy something from you. Now let's talk about creating merchandise that is geared towards that event. Years ago, a band that I worked with played a zoo that was having a craft beer festival. They created a t-shirt with a monkey on it holding a big, big stein. They took their marketing and their merchandise and they geared it towards the zoo's festival, the craft beer festival. Think about where you're playing. What creative ideas can you come up with? What concept could you throw together that is tailored towards that event. So that when people pick up the t-shirt and go, oh man, this is really cool. There's a monkey slamming a beer. And it's got the band's logo on it. I'll take this t-shirt. Want, want to take this an another step forward? A huge step forward? Donate a dollar from each merchandise that you sell, whether it's t-shirt or a CD. Donate a dollar back towards the charity event that's happening, if you're playing a charity event. Most events or festivals, even if it's not a charity event, they have some type of charity they support. So if it's the 18th Annual Songwriters Fest, they sponsor Instruments of Change. They sponsor someone. Find out who they sponsor. Or sponsor your own company or your own... Uh, or no, I'm sorry, not company. Sponsor... Sponsor someone that you want to. But that's another idea. So I really hope some of these ideas help. So let's overview what we talked about. If you're not going to get paid on an exposure gig, figure out a way to monetize it so that you can play this exposure gig, you can sell merchandise, and you can gain a new fan base. Do a trade-off for free marketing. Do a trade-off for free advertising. Do a trade-off for free photos or videos. Connect with current clients and have them pay you to become a brand ambassador of the event. Sell merchandise by fine-tuning the band. And create memorable merchandise by constantly brainstorming and putting ideas together and connecting the charity event with your music or vice versa, but create, create something that stands out from your typical merchandise items. And one thing I really think should be understood about my, my whole podcast and my above statement, and this didn't work well when I posted this in the blog format, 
because very few people actually took the time and read the blog, and they commented without reading the blog. But one thing I think you really should understand about this podcast is I feel that every artist and performer should be compensated for their time, especially after all the hard work that they put in to each and every show. But the nature of the beast and the true reality is that exposure gigs will always be a part of the community. It's up to you how you approach the exposure gig. And it's up to you to find creative ways to monetize these exposure gigs so that you can get out and make new fans. I hope all these ideas enable you more wriggle, wiggle room when, when the band needs to play for free. I hope you guys get new fans. Don't run away from the dreaded exposure gig. Embrace it and monetize it. So that's my podcast on exposure gigs. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you hear, follow us on Twitter at HoldThat77. We have a YouTube channel up now. Do a, Subscribe to it. Like it. Uh, if you have thoughts, comments, please feel free to send us an email at cjsevents1 at gmail.com. I'm always open to feedback. I know that the more feedback I get, the more I'm going to learn and the more I can share. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Hold That Thought.